Recording is on. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to last week's growth call. This is a postponement of uh, the call that was supposed to happen last Thursday. Um, so hope, hello to everybody. Welcome uh, who people who are on the call and those of you guys watching afterward. Uh, this is actually a I know it's an odd time. It's a Monday evening for most people. and It's actually a holiday here in the States. So a uh, bit of an odd time, but we wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure that we had this call to provide a forum for users and the broader community to discuss the protection mechanisms that we are uh, going to be adding to, to BISC uh, in the next few weeks. We're going to be having a call tomorrow with the developers to finalize these mechanisms and uh, hopefully come to a, a devise a plan to actually implement them. And so I wanted to uh, solicit feedback from the community before that. Um, as far as the just logistical notes, we're on Jitsi here for the first time. Usually we use Hangouts. There's no live stream per se. Um, you can watch the call without participating in it with audio or video, but just note that it is being recorded and it will be uploaded to YouTube soon, within the next day or so. There is a text chat if you would like to ask your questions or make suggestions or comments during the call without audio or, or video. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, we're going to have a call on Thursday so we can talk about the market update there. I um, want to, I guess, focus the call on the protection mechanisms and uh, what's going on there. So um, I guess I should, should start out by introducing uh, Manuel, uh, who's been one of our chief architects of these, of these mechanisms, the, the brain behind a lot of what we've been uh, discussing and doing. So. Uh, Hi, Manuel. Thank you for all your input so far. It's been uh, been, been great to, to work on this stuff with you. Um, Hello. Yeah. Um, any questions or comments so far before we get into the, the actual mechanisms? From anybody on the call or? All right. Um, so. For the protection mechanisms, we've we've had several proposals over the past several weeks. And I guess in this call, I want to draw attention to two in particular. Um, one of them is, so the first one is proposal number 83. I'll put a, a link to that. That's uh, the multi-factor uh, verification mechanism proposal. Um, the focus is actually on the other one, 93, but I want to start out with this one because it's kind of the the start the start of 90, the, the conceptual start to 93. Um, number 83 proposed that every trade, that the buyer in every trade prove his identity through a number of different verification mechanisms. Um, one of those was a second bank account um, with the assumption that it's relatively difficult for a, a, a scammer to have to obtain control of two different bank accounts for the same user with the same name at the same time. Um, and and by, by doing that for a trade, the seller could be fairly, uh, maybe not fairly sure, but more certain, more sure that the person on the other end was uh, is actually who he says he is. That's one mechanism. There's a few of them. Another mechanism is using uh, social accounts or other digital identities such as a blog or a, uh, a personal website or a home page, uh, Twitter account, a GitHub account to prove if they have your name on them that you have control of those accounts at the time of the trade. And therefore, chances are you are the person who you say you are in your financial accounts. Um, and so the idea there was that every time a trade is made, the user would make these verifications to the seller and make the seller more confident about their identity. Uh, downside, of course, is for active traders or really anybody, it's a lot of work to do that, uh, depending on which verification method you pick. Um, and it could be a, a bit of a pain um, to do that. And so that resulted in proposal number 93, which takes some of these ideas and makes them a little bit more convenient, hopefully reduces the UX uh, obstacle to to making them viable for BISC traders. Um, so this is, I think, largely Manuel's 
work. Would you like to to, to summarize, or I, I could too if you if you prefer, or. So I think you're on mute. Uh, now, now you hear me? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, well, one of, of the main um, mechanisms is, is the to strengthen the the account age also. So yeah. we could do this uh, two ways. Uh, by first having a, a group of uh, all user or if you want trusted users that. When they confirm the payment, the payment uh, to a new, we take that as an event of, uh, as a first event to trigger the account age. So that way, uh, the account age parameter, which has worked pretty well up until now, uh, it would be uh, rather stronger. As, as this is this not just time that, but also we have uh, the knowledge that the, the account has been used. So we know charge pass um, occur uh, in a, uh, several days after um, a scammer uses a stolen account. Um, so if, uh, if an account has been used uh, for more than one month, um, it is difficult that uh, the real owner that does, does not realize. So by having the payment confirmation from a trusted seller um, and from that, uh, to trigger the the account age, I think that is good, and we could do it. It would be best to do it uh, from a uh, two-factor verification or a uh, uh, more uh, secure verification, but only if if we, if we have the confirmation of the, of the payment, a normal payment, a normal trade. That I think that that is already a bigger step from what mm -hmm. we have now. And if, if we add a second verification, then the, the step is huge. Um, also, yeah. for that first trade, we have a little bit of more days. Um, so the seller, okay, the seller uh, receives the payment, but waits four or five days more. Uh, I think that most, charge, most uh, chargebacks occur in three or four working days. So... If something strange happens, uh, the seller could even recover his BTC, his Bitcoin, and and only uh, the charge passes are more difficult to detect because uh, more days are half passed. Then, well, for that it, that that would be more difficult. But I think that we will narrow a lot the the, the scammer cases. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's that's the key. The key. Uh... The key part of this proposal is to make account age more meaningful. Because right now, when you create a new account, no matter what you put in that account, uh, the the data you you populate those fields with, it could be complete gibberish, or it could be an authentic account that you actually own. From that day onward, account age starts to build. Um, and so, what this proposal does, as Manuel said, is it it only starts to age the account once evidence of a successful trade and or a successful verification have actually taken place. And so I think the second bank account is what we have proposed as one of the main ways to do that. But, um, you know, another there could be other ways um, that we come up with maybe related to other accounts, social accounts elsewhere on the internet, or I maybe mean, we can talk about that. But the main idea is to, to make account age more meaningful and, um, I guess there's also the concept of a triggering user. So how um, how does how are users' accounts who actually allows an account to start aging? I think is another important part of the process. Um, and I guess the idea is that you can only become a triggering user once your account age has reached six months. And um, so that I guess. First, you have to make a trade that is successful and or includes those additional verification methods. From that point, you start to accumulate age. Then after six months go by from that point, then you can start to trigger account age on, on other users. So the idea is that if a scammer wants to take advantage of this, they would have to do a successful trade and successful verification and then wait six months um, 
to reach that that status. And I don't know. I think that's sounds quite formidable to me. Um, of course, there's the the issue of okay, if a scammer is able to get around all of this or find an exploit or somehow um, uh, become a triggering user, um, there's the element of a concept of a blacklist and a ban, whereby a user who has um, who has been scammed by a user that has account age would uh, raise a dispute with an arbitrator and the arbitrator would um, essentially handle the situation, figure out, um, you know, first ask the, the, the buyer to send the Bitcoin back if it was just a fluke. Otherwise, uh, if the person really is sketchy and uh, cannot prove that they are honest, then they would be um, banned. And I believe their onion, their onion would be address would be banned, and none of their accounts would be uh, able to trade on Bisc anymore. And they'd have to start over, I guess. They'd have to make a new account, and then uh, again verify themselves, and then wait six months again to be a, a triggering user. So the, the idea is to make the the barrier to get to this level very strenuous for a dishonest user, um, but relatively easy for. Uh, for an honest user to simply prove their identity and go through a successful trade once and then be able to do go about their business as they want to. So that's the ideas that we have uh, floating right now. If anyone has any comments or questions, concerns, this would be a good time to, to raise them. So I can't really tell how many other, it looks like it's just us on the call. <laughs> All right. Hmm. For uh, a lot more people, I guess the, the tweet got some good engagement on Twitter, but I guess nobody ended up joining. Um, oh, yeah. All right. Um, I guess that's uh, that's it, Manuel. Unless you have any other comments you'd like to to add for now, I guess we'll have a more in depth discussion tomorrow during the developer call. But no, no, not not additional comments. Just uh, well, if anyone uh, that listens to this video later, in a, maybe he can. Um, throw the questions at, uh, in the Slack or in the GitHub proposals, so we can discuss them tomorrow. Yeah, that sounds good. And uh, I'll try to get this video up quickly so that people can see it uh, before tomorrow. Did someone else just join? Yeah, we just uh, we just finished going through the uh, the proposals. So if you have any questions, feel free to to jump in. Questions or comments. Okay, you're on mute. Uh, if you if you said anything, uh, we weren't able to hear it. Um, all right, all right. So if that's it, then um, we'll. Can you hear me? It. Oh yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. That's it's you. Me? Oh hi. Yes, I've been here listening, but I wasn't able to talk. I was I was trying to figure it out. But... Okay. Okay. So. All this is just to to defeat payments that have been causing trouble. Or yeah, so only it only yeah. it only applies to fiat payments that have chargeback risk. Oh, okay, so it's Interact and SEPA. The rest. Well, yeah, okay. so, well, Interact is SEPA, and then and then all the other ones. So any kind of uh, bank transfer, Zelle, anything that you can do a chargeback on. Uh, this this would apply to so it, it would not apply to face to face it would not apply to uh, money orders um, mm -hmm. but it would apply to any kind of uh, bank transfer or payment method where you can do a chargeback. Okay. Okay. 
So, yeah, I, th I think it's uh, at least the proposal in 93 for account aging attempts to apply more robust verification methods without too much of a burden on UX. I guess that's the main challenge that we're facing on how to do that without pushing people away from, from trading altogether. So, yep. So, uh, yeah, any other questions or concerns? That's all I have really to, to discuss. Just wanted to, to do a quick summary of the ideas that are uh, the main ones that are we're, we're considering implementing right now and um, offer you know, the forum for anybody to talk uh, about concerns or suggestions. And otherwise, we'll have the developer call tomorrow. Uh, I think we're planning for, uh, I forget, I think 5 p.m. Uh, Cent, uh, what is it? Uh, CET. So I guess the Central European time, and then um, yeah, hopefully start implementing these measures uh, fairly quickly in the next several weeks. All right. So uh, if that's it. Then uh, thank you guys for joining. And it was again an odd time on a Monday evening, but I appreciate you joining. And uh, we'll see you hopefully on Thursday for the regularly scheduled growth call. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.